So, um, hello everybody, it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, we're going to be talking about some things that we have heard this morning. So maybe we're going to reinforce the message and maybe bring more insights. First thing we're going to talk is about the world. Very short introduction. Uh, we know the world is changing very fast. And we know one of the things that is changing a lot is the economies and how the economy, sorry, and how the emerging countries, the ones that we call the eagles by BBVA, this is these seven countries, they're going to represent 60% of the GDP in 10 years, of the, of the growth of the GDP. And this will be compared to the only 9% of US. So this is going to be a turnaround on how the economies are playing in the world. The other thing we look at is the technology and how we are all connected more than ever. Like how an individual can influence a whole group and we become to this collective intelligence. We are connected everywhere, anywhere. 80% of the people in the world have a mobile. Half of them nearly will have a smartphone. We're able to give opinion, to discuss anytime, whatever we want. And at one point, the brand reputation is not even what they're communicating in the marketing strategy. It's more what the digital community is saying, what they're talking about. At one point, we're going to be designing the vision of a company, the product and services, because now, an individual can influence the whole group in seconds before someone in the Middle East would set himself on fire or herself on fire. Only the village would know. Today, in question of seconds, minutes, we all know about it. All this connection between people is also happening between devices. And this is what we call the Internet of Things that was named this morning. The Internet of Things is connecting every device and the terminology was, bo was born in the 1999 by the MIT, where they had the auto, D, uh, auto ID center. And what they wanted to do is to track every hardware, software, and middle layer. They wanted to track this with a unique ID on the internet world. And this is the definition of Internet of Things. You define every object by a unique ID on the internet world. And we've seen this more and more that just imagine that all the objects that surround us, they have this uh, device identifying how the business would change and how, for example, a book would talk to the shelf, would talk to the storage and say, you know, there's no more books in the, in the library. So suddenly, you will not create units that are extra units that you need to, that are spare. You would know which products are needed and when. So all this data, that we are creating is something I want to talk about today. So what you see in here is uh, an accelerator of particles. This is um, it's in Geneva, between Geneva, Switzerland and France. And this was created in 54. It was an association of several countries in Europe. And this is where the theory of the physicists are proven or are experimented. And you have heard about it. They have discovered several particles. In here, what, what they try to find is the origin of the universe. But the point that I want to get to is, this is an accelerator. It's 27 kilometers below the Earth, 100 meters below the Earth. And you round particles in one sense and other particles in the other sense, and you make them collide. But these collisions are happening every second. There is thousands of collisions. And these collisions are producing a lot of data that is captured and it's analyzed, and from there we get the conclusions. So this is one of the points where we have the origin of this extra large data being produced. By now, they have 15 petabytes of data. There is other fields where we're also producing a lot of data, like human genomics, like traffic, like internet archive. There is large uh, sets of data. But what is really big data, or how could we define big data? There is many definitions. This morning we saw one. Uh, in theory, it's the same. I mean, theory. In reality, it's the same definition. Big data is large sets of data that cannot be analyzed, managed in the traditional way. We need new processes, and we need new applications. Um, if you read the internet, you're going to find that the origin of big data in reality was brought by these companies. Because Amazon, for example, you bought a book, and he said, I saw that you bought a book, but look what the other people also bought. And suddenly we realize, using the information of my actions, I can propose better product and services for my client. So suddenly we all, we all got into this 
um, into this track of I can use the information I produce and convert it into something useful. Now, this data has to be somehow correlated to be considered big data and have good services or, or good value out of them. What does it mean? If I have a motor and I put sensors in it, I'm gonna be able to measure the temperature, the pressure, the velocity of the piston, and I can optimize how these three parameters correlate so I can have better production of energy. And this is what I would consider big data. Because you have, if I have large sets of data just on a vertical mode, this will be more business intelligence, how I can maybe uh, do a statistic anal uh, analysis so I can have a trend. Big data can be divided in structured and unstructured. It was also mentioned this morning. Structured would be those that have a pattern behind, like a traffic light is doing on, off, and I can track the times this is going on and off. There's some modelization behind. Unstructured would be me talking. I'm saying a lot of dates, I'm saying names, but it's, it's a whole set of data of text, and it's unstructured. To be able to extract the, qual the, the quality of this data would be uh, different processes. So if we look now, in the last two years, we have produced 90% of the data in the world. Unstructured, unstructured data. Okay, so now let's look at people. How people every day, when we move in, in the street, when we move at home, we're producing data through our credit cards, through conversations on the phone, where we're navigating, where we're using the car, the email. All this data that the cities are producing is amazing, but only 5% is being used for something that it wasn't created for. Like when I go to the train, I have a train ticket and it's only one less that is left. In, in, in some cases we use this information, but when we use it, we do it in a vertical mode. We say, okay, I have the traffic control and I have all the traffic lights, and I use this data to improve how the traffic lights work. But I never mix this data with all the layers. And then I say, if I mix it together with how many cars are passing, then I could maybe build an extra road because I realize I could diverge the, the traffic. So um, now let's have a look at the meta world. Meta is a prefix that means beyond the world. And this is something I can see beyond my eyes. And this is the first example, you know, the Google Glass. They have a camera installed, and what I'm gonna be able to see is something that I don't see with my eyes. It's something that is the descriptive world. This is New York, and this is the way we will see New York soon. We're gonna see the hotels that are around, we will see what other people are thinking, how far they are from me, restaurants, hotels. This is what we start calling the meta world. Now you say, first of all, what is BBVA, and how can BBVA bring value into this new meta world? Well, BBVA is a bank. We're present in 33 countries, 50 million clients. And what I want to show is this one. We have people moving in the cities, and we're able to capture how people are spending their money, and they are interacting to each other. So we have 30 million credit cards. We have point of sales. We have ADMs. 26 million transactions, transactions a day. Now let me introduce you Madrid. Some of you have been there. This is the Gran Vía. It's very nice, Madrid by night. And now let's look at Madrid from another perspective. This is not a map, this is just the points represent people spending and using their credit cards. So without having the streets marked, you can already identify that this is the city of Madrid. And you can have another perspective and say, now I'm gonna represent in green when people are spending from 10 to 15 euros average, in blue from 50 to 100 euros, for example. There's many things you can do with the data you extract from transactions because you know where the people are coming from. If they go to a shop, you know that they're coming from another village, how long they have driven, or you know if there is, they, they are men, women, if they're young. Um, you know many information about them, and you, we have been created, and you could be creating many, many views of this. Now let me introduce you Barcelona. This is um, the Passage de Gracia, and this is one of the shopping uh, uh, streets of Barcelona. Now I show you the street of Barcelona, the Passage de Gracia, and now you see the intersection with other streets, and these columns represent the shops that are in those streets. So you see the volume of transactions that they have. And you see in the middle there is something blue very tall. This is 15% of the, of the expense that they do in the whole street. 
uh, I can't say the name of this shop, but it's related to coffee and a very good, uh, good looking man. And so um, you can already see that not only that this, this uh, shop is getting a lot of attraction, you also see that if you analyze people after going to this shop, they go, 40% of the cases, they go to all the shops. So you could also track people that go and buy coffee, they also go and buy shoes, for example. Now I present you an event. This is the Gay Pride in Madrid, very famous event. More than one million people come, and they party during a week. And now let's have a look at this event from another perspective. So this is the perspective of in the main uh, neighborhood where people are partying, you see how much they're spending, and you see in red, you see that this, is, this is around five, uh, 500 euros per square meter. And now you have a view and you say, let's compare to a normal week where you don't have this event. And you realize in green is where you have an increase of more than 100% in expenses. Even the dark green means more than 900%. So with all this information, you can, you can also influence how the cities are organized, how the services are provided to the citizens, because you can say, Today, when someone comes to an event like this, the maximum you can know is the hotel they're staying in, because sometimes they have to sign this in the plane or because you find out this information. But you don't know if they go to museums, you don't know what kind of restaurants they visit, you don't know how they're moving. And by analyzing all this information, you can offer better services and better lines for the bus or for the train, and you can improve the quality of life. This is, oh, sorry. This is one of my uh, favorite slides, and this, this is really the pulse of the city during this event. And when it goes up, it's because the expense is going up. It goes up to 40,000 euros uh, during the day. But you see, when it goes down, is that people are sleeping. And it's very funny because it goes down, it doesn't go down at 10 p.m., it goes at like 5 in the morning because people are partying, and then they go up again at 2 p.m. And then you see in green, in there it says um, what is happening on that day. And when they're gonna do, for example, the opening of the event, there is a lot, a lot of people on the street and a lot of um, activity. Okay, now there is a lot of data, data, data. And we have been he hearing this in many conferences. What is important is, what are you gonna be with this data? So data scientists, they dedicated a lot of time to say, where do I find this data? How do I merge this data and bring value? Now is the time where we're moving and we're saying, let's do something with this data. Because it's very interesting what I show. Oh yeah, I see how people are moving, but tell me something that I don't know. Because this, once you tell me, I don't see the value behind. So the first thing we started looking is the retail business. We looked into the luxury one, we looked into the uh, big stores, into the churreria, I don't know if you know churros, and you have the, the little shops. And we said, okay, if you go and talk to them, they say, I already know a lot. I know my clients, I know the area, I'm selling my products, and I know my sector. If I'm selling shoes, for example, I know who is selling shoes in my street and how they're doing. Okay, but this is what I know of the intersection of the three because for sure I don't know everything. But now the question is, do you know what your customers are doing in your area when they leave your shop? Or you know, you don't, you know what they're interested in? The other thing is, do you know that the customers that don't come to you, what they're doing in this area and in this sector? So you start asking questions about what they know about the whole environment because you just know the people that come into your shop and in some cases you don't even know them. So you ask the questions and what customers you know doing in your area, my customers in my sector, my customers in my sector and area. And when you analyze all this information and you prepare it, you start creating value, and out of this value, you can create a business opportunity. So um, you can also even analyze what non-customers are doing in other sectors and areas. So you come back and you say, okay, this is the proposal. If I know what my customers are doing in your area, maybe you could do cross-selling, because I realize uh, they buy buying shoes by you, but then they go to Nike, and they buy these trainers. So maybe if you are trainers, you will be able to sell something different to them. Or you say, uh, I see that your customers are buying shoes and then they go for a coffee. So maybe in, if you introduce coffee in your shops, it will be something that they will be very happy about. So you can start seeing what your customers are behaving, what they're looking for, so you can create extra value for them and you can create business behind. 
And like this, you have like opening hours, for example. You have on Sundays, you're not opening in the morning, but everybody selling shoes are opening and they're making money because they're making an average of 500 per day. And then you decide to also open on Sundays. The same for expansion if you want to create in other areas or loyalty programs because I'm going to tell you who are your clients, when are they coming, and you can do also cross-selling and diversification. So now I present you the first pilot that we are creating and it's called Commons 360. This is the solution we have developed for, um, for stores, for merchants. This is uh, being launched in Mexico and in Spain. Um, for this whole year we've been piloting and they've been giving feedback, what they like, what they don't like. And it basically, this is kind of confidential so that's why you can't read anything. And it basically says the temperature, like how your, your, your shop is doing compared to the others, what the others are getting. There is one disclaimer very important in here. This is all aggregated and anonymous. You will never know what a person is doing. It just says people between 20 and 30, they are spending an average of 500 euros, for example. But you, you can say every day on a daily update, you can see the temperature, which is 8,2. And you can also see compared to others. Shops in your same sector, shops in your same street. So um, it's something very useful that they, they find in that they need it. As soon as they start like using it, they see it. And one thing is this, but there is another, um, another step in the chain. The first one was I find the data, I do something with it, which is this. I find the gaps, but now the third step is, and I know how to, f how to close this gap. If I tell you here, on Sundays, everybody's selling um, fridges and you don't sell any. Then the third step is, now I offer you a finance product that says on Sundays, you have 0% interest when you offer your fridges. So the, the merchants are very happy because you're telling them where they have a problem, they have a gap, and you're giving them a solution, which is the third part of, the, of this whole big data, bringing value. Okay, now we go to the last block and it's designing the future together with all of you. This is a good opportunity. So I show you quickly, this is the Innovation Center of EBBA in Madrid. This is the place where many people come, they share the ideas, uh, they tell us how they're innovating. It's an innovation lab as well where we show uh, Commerce 360, we show all the products we're working on and thanks to the interaction of other people, we, we can uh, improve them. This is the funnel. Of, uh, of all the opportunities we are currently developing. And we don't do this alone. It's an open innovation model. And I, here I like this, uh, the CEO of Procter & Gamble. He said half of the products that we're gonna sell are gonna come from outside because not half of the talent in the world work, work in my company. And I really love that. And it, it's, it's really related to this. When we create this funnel, we use people from outside. We have design thinkers that come and work with us. We do venturing with companies, co-development. We don't do this alone because today is impossible and because if we want to um, confront the challenges that were presented uh, first time this morning, we need to work together in collaboration. So uh, in, in the same line, uh, we're working on the open platform which is this open collaboration. Open platform is, okay, VVVA exists for 150 years. We have developed a lot of assets. Now is the time to put these assets out there so all this can use them and create more value. How do we do this? So we take our digital assets, let's say data, let's say platform. When you, for example, create um, an account, you can do it online. We take these assets in the form of APIs, which is software packages. We leave them out there and we ask the developers, they can connect, use the data, use the information, use our platform to create new applications that can bring value to the users. So uh, we're working on the open platform would be a different way of doing business because you're not focusing on how to get more interest from the client, but more how can I open my assets to the community so that we can create more value um, out there. So in this line, we have launched the Innova Challenge, which is for developers. What we have done is four million transactions are out there, and we have said, use this data, anonymous, aggregated. Use it to create applications and come back the 8th of December with your iPhone, and you're gonna tell me, or oh, with your smartphone, it doesn't matter. You're gonna say, this is what I created. It's an application that says when you should buy milk again, because I realized you went to the grocery store 10 days ago 
or I'm going to tell you that you're spending your money in the first five days of the month after your salary. So it's a challenge that is big data related to open platform. We put these transactions out there and we say, so for the, uh, it was um, announced two months ago, we have nearly 200 companies, companies, startups, developers that have signed up and we're going to see many solutions. We're very excited to see what happens uh, very soon. So this is what I meant about all of us uh, bringing value. And this is the end of my presentation with the Innova Challenge that I invite you to register your project in this challenge. And also if you happen to be in Madrid to come to the Innovation Center and share your ideas with us. Thank you very much.